In this exercise, we will define superelevation and assign it to a corridor so that a geometry is appropriately superelevated through the curves. Just like we've done in our previous files with terrain, geometry, and corridors, we're going to federate our superelevation definitions into a separate two dimensional file. We have already set that file up for you for speed, but it is nothing more than a blank two dimensional file with the geometry already referenced into it. So we'll open up that file where we're going to define our superelevation shapes for each piece of geometry. In this example, we're going to define super elevation along this ramp, this ramp C, where we've been building our corridors. So from the corridors tab menu, we will go to the create super elevation tool, select the feature definition that we want to use for that super elevation, provide it a name. So we'll call this ramp C. Locate our alignment. Define the beginning and ending stations. I'll use my Alt key to lock all the way from the beginning to the end. And then define a minimum tangent length. Now one of the things that the minimum tangent length is going to do is determine how many super elevation sections we have. By providing a very large value like 10,000, we're forcing this to having a single super elevation section or something that's going to use the same definitions throughout this whole area. If we had a situation where we maybe had different design speeds for different parts of our job or different super elevation requirements, you may want to break this into multiple super elevation sections. Now that we have the section defined, the next thing we need to do is define the lanes. How is the actual rotation and pivoting of the super going to occur? So we'll give the, the names a lane, the lanes a name. So we'll just call this one ramp. It's a primary lane. It's going to be located on the left side of the center line. It starts right at the center line and goes out for a distance of 2.65 meters. Excuse me, 3.65 meters. And it's going to have a normal cross slope of negative 2%. That lane is now created. It prompts us to create additional lanes if we need. This being a ramp, it's only a single lane, so we're done with that. I'm going to click Reset to get out of that. Now if I zoom in before I continue on with the next prompt, what we see is that lane created right here. This is this green object, and that is the width that we typed in, the 3.65 meters wide, starting at 0 out to 3.65 meters. If we were on a multi-lane project, we could have additional lanes next to this, as many as we needed. Now, right now, that lane is defined at the standard super slope, the negative 2%. What I'm going to do is go in and now tell it to calculate whatever its max super is, its transition stations, and its transition lengths, and figure out the rest of the super elevation on this. So the first thing we need to do is tell it what super elevation standards file we want to use for the calculations. I'll click Alt down arrow to browse out and find my file. I'm going to take the default file here, which is an Ashto based metric file. So I've selected that definition file. This is nothing more than an XML file that you can set up with any super elevation standards that you have for anywhere in the world. Um, Pick the, the super or max super selection methodology that I'm going to use. Could be uh, formula based or table based. Uh, I can use my length, my transition link selection method, all based on what's in this XML file. Define my design speed that I'm going to use. We'll do a 50 kilometer an hour design here. Our pivot method and have it calculate that super. Now as it does this, notice that the color of this lane just changed. Let me zoom up or move up here a little bit. And let's look at this area where it's actually changing. So it's now changing from a green to a blue color. And what that is is an indicator for you that the rate is changing along there. If I use my element selection tool and I select this shape, 
You will also see that it shows you where that change is happening. There's a little marker, zoom in a little more. You can see that little marker right there indicating that that's where the constant 2% ended. That was at this station at a two, negative 2% 2 rate. And at this location, at this next station, I was up to a negative 8% rate. So this is my transition area. And you'll see that that's where the color gradually changes. There's a couple of ways we can review our super elevation data. One is what I just showed you. We can also look at the super elevation in a diagram view, editable diagram view. So we'll select this. It prompts us to pick our super section, which is this element here, and then open a view where we want to see that. So I can pick any view and data point in there. And it's now going to show me my super elevation uh, section in there. I can select this and this is editable. If I zoom in on it you will see that this is a set of editable values. These are the same values and stations that I was seeing here. So for example if I came over here and I changed this value and said my max super is now going to be 7% and I went over here and I looked at this you will see that this is now at 7%. Or if I change it here back to an 8%, we'll go back over here and look at this, you can see it's back to an 8%. So I can make adjustments to my super elevation in a variety of different manners. If I need to tweak it from what my standard definitions are calculating it as, coming out of my rate tables. Now, how do I actually apply this super elevation to a corridor? Well, I don't have a corridor in here. Remember, I'm in a separate file. I've just got my geometry referenced in. So let's go back to our corridor file and apply the super elevation. So let's look at our ramp C corridor. This is where we built these two initial corridors. And let's bring in that super elevation. We do that simply by referencing it. So I'm going to work in my 2D view. I made sure that was active. I'm going to reference in my super elevation data, just using coincident world referencing. There is my super elevation data now. So now I'm going to use my assign to corridor tool. Prompts me to pick my super section and then to pick my corridor that I'm assigning it to. It will then bring up a mapping of the super object that it found as well as the template points that it found. Make this a little bit bigger here so we can see the full names and where it's found that it, it believes it should tie that super to based on the lane widths and how the templates itself was set up to bring that or apply that super elevation to this template. Now before I accept that, I'm going to zoom in over here on my Oh, it's not going to let me. Let me go ahead and accept that and then we'll go look at the 3D model. So it's processed the super and this has now changed. This was the corridor I picked. So if I zoom in here closely, this has now had super applied to it. Well, how can I see that? One way I can look at that is let's spin this around so we can see the other side of this and you will see that the ramp now is super elevated but the bridge deck has not because I only applied that super so far to this corridor. In a moment, we'll go back and apply it to the bridge deck and we'll clean that up. So let's process the other side of our super. So let me just zoom over here in my 3D model to this side. And right now we can see our road and our bridge are mapping up well, but we haven't applied super to either one of these yet. So let's assign our super, this super definition, to this corridor right here. Shows our mapping, we'll accept that and watch our 3D model update here as the super is applied to it and you can see it's now transitioning more. So we need to do the same thing to our bridge deck which is in a separate file so we'll go to the bridge deck file reference in our super elevation go to our corridors tab and select the assigned to corridor tool 
pick the super shape, pick the corridor I want to assign it to, try the again, assign the corridor, pick the super elevation shape, and pick the corridor I want to assign it to, accept the mapping, and it's cleaned up that bridge. Just to show you that it indeed did clean that up, let's go back to our Ramp C corridor and just zoom in on these objects and you can see that they're nicely matched now. They're using the same super elevations and both have been rotated to the appropriate uh, slope for these roadways. That concludes this exercise. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.